Hello, welcome back to the Cookie Conundrum, Recipe for Success, an industry conference and summit from Quantcast on the demise of third-party cookies. We've got a great industry panel here to break it down. Chris Gunther, Senior Vice President, Global Head of Programmatic at News Corp. Um, Chris, thanks for coming on. Uh, Zhao Lin, Managing Director of Solutions at Zaxis, and Somer Simpson, Vice President of Product at Quantcast. Stellar panel, looking forward to this conversation. Uh, thanks for coming on and, and uh, chatting about the cookie conundrum. Thank you for having us. So Chris, we'll start with you at News Corp, obviously a major publisher, um, deprecation of third-party cookies affects uh, everyone. You guys have a ton of traffic, ton of audience uh, across multiple formats. Um, tell us about the impact to you guys and the reliance you guys had on them and what are you going to do to prepare for this next level change? Sure, I mean, I think like everyone in this industry, there's a, you know, a significant reliance. And I think it's something that uh, a lot of talk about audience targeting, but obviously the reliance on third-party cookies pervasive across the whole ad tech ecosystem, MarTech stack. And so, you know, we, we have to think about, the, you know, how that impact, you know, our vendor, or, you know, the vendors we work with, what it means in terms of our use cases uh, across marketing, across advertising, or across site experience. So, you know, without a doubt, it, it's it's significant, but, you know, we, we look at it as, Listen, it's disruptive uh, and disruption and change is always a little scary, um, but overall it's a it's a long overdue reset. I mean, I think that, uh, you know, our perspective is that the, the cookie is, as we all know, was, it was a crutch, right? It's sort of a, a technology being used in a way it shouldn't. Um, and so as we look at what's going to happen, presumably after Jan 2022, um, then it's it's a good way to kind of fix on, on some bad practices, uh, practices that led to data leakage, um, for, practice sort of devalued for our perspective, some of the, you know, we, we offered as, as publishers. And I think that this is and a key thing is that we're not just looking to, as we look through post gen uh, world, not just kind of recreating the, the prior world because the prior world was flawed, or I guess I could say the current world since that hasn't changed yet, <laughs> but the current world is flawed. Let's not just not, you know, let's not just replicate that. You know, let's make sure that, um, you know, third party cookie goes away, other workarounds like fingerprinting and things like that, you know, also go away. So, you know, so philosophically, that's where, where our head's at. And so, you know, as we look at how we are preparing, you know, you look at sort of what are the core building blocks of, uh, of preparing for this world. Obviously, one of the key ones is, you know, privacy compliance. Like, how do we treat our users uh, with consent? You know, how obviously are we um, aligned with the regulatory environments? You know, in some ways, we're not looking just at Jan 2022, but Jan 2023, where there's going to be the majority of our audiences will be covered by regulation. And so I think from regulation up to data gathering, to data activation, uh, all built around an internal identifier that we've developed that allows us to uh, have a you know, sort of a, a consistent, uh, you know, look at our users, whether they're logged in or obviously anonymous. So it's really looking across all those components, across all our sites and, uh, you know, in all in a privacy compliant way. So a lot of work to be done, a lot of work in progress, but, you know, we're excited about what's going on. I like how you framed it, uh, you know, old world or next gen, kind of the current situation is kind of flawed. And as you think about programmatic, just the concept is, is mind blowing and what needs to be done. So we'll come back to that because I think that original content view is uh, certainly relevant. It's a huge investment and you got great content and audience consuming it. So from a major media standpoint, get your perspective on the impact because you've got clients who want to get their, their message out in front of the, the audience at the right time, at the right place in the right context, right? So you got privacy, you got consent, all these things kind of boiling up. How do you help clients prepare? Because now they can go direct to the consumer. You know, everyone, everyone has a megaphone now. Everyone's, you know, everyone's here, everyone's connected. So how are you <laughs> impacted by this new notion? You know, if, if the cookie list future was a TikTok dance, we'll be dancing right now. And at least into the next year. Um, this has been top of mind for us and our clients for quite some time. But I think as each day passes, the picture becomes clearer and more in focus. Uh, the end of the third party cookie does not mean the end of programmatic. Um, so clients work with us in transforming their investments into real business outcomes based on our expertise and based on our tech. So we continue to be in a great position to lead, to educate, to partner and to grow with them um, along this uh, uh, cookie list future. The impact will be all encompassing in changing the ways we do things now and also accelerating the things that we've already been building on. So we take it from the top, planning uh, will have a huge impact because it's going to start becoming more strategic around real business outcomes. We're omni-channel, so clients want to drive outcomes uh, through multiple touch points of a consumer's journey. 
whether that's programmatic, whether that's a cookie-free environment like connected TV, digital out of a home, audio, gaming, and so forth. So we're gonna see more of these strategic holistic plans. Creative will have a lot of impact. It will start becoming more important with creative testing, creative insights. You know, creative in itself is cookie-less. So there will be more focus on how to drive uh, brand dialogue to connect to consumers with less targeting, with less cookies. With the cohesiveness of holistic planning, creative can align through multiple channels. And lastly, the role of AI will become increasingly important. You know, we've always looked to build our tech, our products to complement new and existing technology, as well as the client's own data and tech stack to deliver these outcomes for them. And AI in its uh, core, it's, it's just taking inputted data uh, and having an output of your desired outcome. So input data could be DSP data, beyond cookies, such as browser, such as location, such as contextual or publisher, taking clients first party data, first party CRM data, uh, like store visitation, sales, site activity, um, and using that to optimize in real time, regardless of what um, vendor or what channel we're on. Um, so as we're learning more about this cookie list dance, we're helping our clients uh, on the steps of it and also introducing our own moves. That's awesome. Data is going to be a key value proposition, you know, connecting in with content in real time, great stuff. Somewhere with your background in journalism and you're uh, the tech VP of product at Quantcast, you have the keys to the kingdom uh, over there. Um, it's interesting, journalism is about truth and, and, you know, good content, original content, but now you have a data challenge, problem, opportunity on both sides, brands and publishers coming together. This is a data problem in a way, it's a tech, it's a tech stack. Not so much just you know getting the right ads to show up at the right place at the right time. It's really bigger than that now. What's your take on this? Um, you know, I, so first, I, I think that um, <clears throat> consumers already sort of like accept that there is a reasonable value exchange, you know, for their data in order to access free content, right? And that's a that's a critical piece for us to all kind of like um, understand. Over the past, um, oh my gosh, yeah, probably two years since even, even before the like GDPR, we've been doing a, a ton of discovery with, uh, with customers, both publishers and marketers. Um, and so, you know, we, we've kind of known this, this cookie going away thing is, has been coming. Um, and, you know, Google's announcement just kind of confirmed it. And it's been, a, it's been really, really interesting since Google's uh, announcement, how the conversations have changed with, with our customers and, and other folks that we talk to. And I, I've almost gone from being like a, a product manager to a therapist because there's such an emotional response. Yeah. Um, you know, from the marketer perspective, there's real fear there. There's like, oh my God, how, it, you know, it's not just about, you know, delivering ads. It's about how do I control frequency? How do I, how do I like measure, you know, success? You know, cause the technology has, has, has grown so much over the years. Um, to really give mar uh, marketers the ability to deliver personalized, you know, advertising, good content, right, to consumers, um, and be able to monitor it and control it so that it's it's not too uh, too intrusive. Um, on the publisher perspective side, uh, we see a slightly different response. Uh, it's more of a yes, right? You know, we're we're taking back control. We're going to stop the data leakage. We're going to get the value back for our inventory, um, and that it, both things are a good thing. But if it's if it's not managed, it's going to be like ships passing in the night, right? In terms of um, of you know their their th them coming together, right? And that's the critical piece is that they they have to come together, they have to get closer. You've got to cut out a lot of like that loom escape in the middle so that they can talk to each other and understand what's the value exchange happening between marketers and publishers, and how do we do that without cookies? Yeah, it's a fascinating. I love love your insight there. I think it's so relevant, and, and it's got broader implications because, you know, if you look at how data is impacting some of these big structural changes and refactoring of industries, look at cybersecurity. You know, no one wants to share their data, but now if they share, they get more insight, more machine learning benefit, more AI benefit. Yep. So now we have the sharing notion, but that goes against counter the big guys. They want a wall garden. They want to hoard all the data and and control that to provide their own personalization. So you have this confluence of, hey, I want to hoard the data and then now I want to share the data. So Chris and Homer, this, you're in the, in the wheelhouse, you got original content and there's other providers out there. So is there a sharing model coming is with privacy and these kinds of services? 
is the open come back again? How do you guys see this, uh, uh, the confluence of open versus walled guards? Because you need the data to make machine learning good. So I'll, I'll, I'll start uh, start off. I mean, listen, I think you have to give credit to the, the walled gardens have, have created. And I think as, as we look as publishers, what are we offering to our, our clients? What are we offering to the buy side? We need to be compelling. We shouldn't just be, uh, you know, I'd say as, as journalists, I think that there is a case of you know, the importance of funding journalism, um, but ultimately we need to make sure we're meeting the, the KPIs and the, and the business needs of the buy side. And I think around that it is, you know, there's sort of three core pillars to that. It's ease of access, it's scope of, of activation and targeting, and finally measurable results. So as I, I think as us as an individual publisher, so we have, we have multiple publications, so we do have scale, but then in, in partnership with uh, other publishers, perhaps through organizations like Prebid, you know, I think we can, you know, we're trying to address that. And, and I think we can offer something that's compelling um, and uh, transparent uh, in terms of what these results are. But obviously, you know, I want to make sure it's clear that transparent in terms of the results, but obviously, where there's privacy in terms of the data. And, and I think the form, you know, I think we've all heard a lot of like, like data clean rooms, a lot of them out there uh, flogging those wares. And I think there's something valuable, but I, you know, I think it's the right, who is sort of the right partner or partners um, and ultimately who allows us to get as close as possible to the buy side. And so that we can share that data for targeting, share it for perhaps for measurement, but obviously all in a privacy compliant way. Mm -hmm. Summer, what's your take on this? Because you talk about the future of the open internet democratization, the network effect that we're seeing in virality and across multiple omni, omni channels, as Zal pointed out, it's happening. That's the distribution now. So um, that's almost an open garden model. So it's like- um, Yeah. And yeah, it's, it's um, you know, back in the day, you know, um, Knight Ritter, who was, who was the, the first group that I, that I worked for, um, you know, each of the, those individual properties um, were not hugely valuable on their own from a digital perspective, but together as a unit, um, they became valuable, right? And, and got uh, scale for advertisers. Now we're in a place where, you know, I, I kind of think that each of those big networks are going to have to come together and work together to compare in size to the, to the walled gardens. Um, and yeah, this is something that we've talked about before, an, an open garden. Um, I think that's the, that's the definitely the the right uh, route to take, and I and I agree with Chris. It's it's about publishers getting as close to the marketers as possible, working with the tech companies that enable them to do that, and doing so in a very privacy centric way. Zhao, how do we bring the, the the brands and agencies together to get ready for third party cookies? Because there is a therapist moment here of it's going to be okay. The parachute will open. The future is not going to be as as grim. Um, it's a real opportunity, but if managed properly, what's your take on, on this? Is, is it just more first party data strategy? And what's your assessment of this? So we're collaborating right now with um, all brands on how to distill very complex cookie list future, um, you know, what's going to happen in the future to six steps that we can take right now and uh, marketers should take. Um, the first step is gather intel on what's working on your current campaign, analyzing the data sets across cookie-free environments. So you can translate those tactics eventually when the cookies do go away. So we have to look at things like temporal or time analysis. We could look at log level data. We could look at site analytics data. Uh, we could look at brand measurement tools and how creative uh, really impacts the campaign success. The second thing we can look at is geotargeting strategies. The geotargeting strategy has been uh, Underrated because the granularity in geodata uh, could go down all the way to the local level, even beyond zip code. So for example, the census block data. And this is especially important for CPG brands. Um, so we're working closely with the client teams to understand not only the online data, but the offline data and how we can utilize that in the future. Uh, we want to optimize investments around markets that are working, so strong markets, and then test in underperforming markets. Um, the third thing we can look at is contextual. So contextual by itself is cookie free. Uh, we could build on small scale usage to test and learn various keywords and content categories based sets, working closely with partners to find ways to leverage their data to mimic audiences that you are trying to target right now with cookies. Um, the fourth one is publisher data or publisher targeting. So working with your publishers uh, that you have strong relationships with 
who can curate similar audiences using their own first party data and conducting RFIs to understand the scale and reach against your audience and their future roadmaps. So work with your top publishers based on historical data to try to recreate your best strategies. The fifth thing, and I think this is very important, is first party data. You know, that's gonna matter more than ever in the cookie list future. Uh, brands will need to think about how to access and develop the first party data, starting with the consumer seeing a value in exchange for the information. It's a goldmine in understanding your consumer, their intent, their journey, um, and you need a really great data sciences team to extract insights out of that data, which will be crucial. So partner with strategic onboarding vendors and vet their ability to accept first party data into a clean room environment for targeting, for modeling, for insights. And lastly, the sixth thing that we can do is begin informed prospect, uh, prospecting by dedicating test budget to start gaining learnings about cookie lists. Uh, one, uh, one place that we can start, and it is underinvested right now, is Safari and Firefox. They have been cookie lists for quite some time, so you can start here and begin testing here. Uh, work with your data scientist team to understand the right mixes to, tar to target and start exploring other channels outside of um, just programmatic cookies uh, like CTV, digital out of home, radio, gaming, and so forth. So those are the six steps that we're taking right now with our clients to uh, prepare and plan for the cookie list future. So Chris, let's go back to you. What's the solution here? Is there one, is there multiple solutions? What's the future look like for a cookie list future? Uh, I, I think the, the one certain answer is there definitely is not just one solution. Um, as we all know right now, there, there seems to be endless solutions, a lot of ideas out there, proposals with the W3C, uh, work happening within other industry bodies, uh, you know, private company solutions being offered. And, you know, it's a little bit of, it's enough to make everyone's head spin and to try to track it, to understand it, understand the impact. And as a publisher, we're obviously, uh, you know, a lot of people are knocking on our door. Uh, you know, they're saying, hey, our solution is one that uh, it's going to bring in lots of money. You know, they, all the buy sides are going to use it. This is the one, like, unlock all the spend. Um, and it's so our experience experience so far is that none of these solutions are, because I think everyone's still testing and learning. No one on the buy side from our, you know, from our knowledge is really committed to one or a few. It's all about a testing stage. I think that, you know, putting aside all that noise, I think what matters the most to us as publishers is actually something uh, Summer mentioned before. It's about control. You know, if we're going to work with a, uh, you know, again, outside of our sort of, in, you know, internal identifier uh, work that we're doing, if we're going to work with an outside party or an outside approach, you know, does it give us control as a publisher to ensure that the, it is, you know, we control the uh, the data from our users, you know, there isn't that data leakage, it's privacy compliant, you know, what information gets shared out there? What is it, uh, what's released within, you know, within the bid stream? Uh, if it is something that's attached to a, uh, a someone, a declared user, a registered user, that if uh, that then is not somehow amplified or leveraged off on another site in a way that is, you know, leveraging uh, bid stream data or fingerprinting, and going against, I think, that the spirit of what we're trying to do in a post third party cookie world. And so that those, those controls are critical. And, and I think to have those controls as publisher, we have to be collectively be disciplined in uh, you know, what solutions that we sort of, we test out and what we eventually adopt. But even when that adoption point arrives, uh, it definitely, it will not be one. There will be multiple because there's just too many use cases to address. Great, great insight there from, from you guys at News Corp. Summer, let's get back to you. I want to get your thoughts. You've been in many waves of innovation, ups and downs. We're on a new one now. We, we talked about the open internet and democratization. Journalism is under a lot of pressure now, but there's now a, a wave of quality. People are really leaning in towards fighting misinformation, understanding truth and, and community, and data is at the heart of it. What do you see as the new future uh, for journalism, to reward journalism? Is there a way, is there a path forward? So there's uh, th there's what I hope is going to happen, um, and then I'm just going to ignore what what could, right? Um, you know, there's there's a trend in market right now uh, in, in a number of fronts, right? So there are marketers who are leaning in to wanting to spend their marketing dollars with uh, quality journalists, focusing on uh, BIPOC uh, uh, owned and operated, really leaning into into supporting those businesses that have been uh, and those publishers that have been ignored for years. I really hope that this trend continues. Um, we are leaning into, into helping um, marketers uh, curate that supply, right? And, and really 
you know, speak um, with their dollars um, about the things that that they support um, and, uh, and and value, right, in market. So I'm hoping that that trend continues and it's not just sort of like a marketing blip, um, but we will do everything possible to kind of like encourage that behavior and, and give people the information that they need to find, you know, truly high quality journalism. That's awesome. Chris Zhao, so thanks for coming on and sharing your insight on this panel on the cookie list future. Um, before we go, just quick summary, each of you, if you don't mind, just give it a quick sound bite or bumper sticker of what we can expect if you had to throw uh, a prediction for what's going to happen in the next 24 months. Chris, we'll start with you. Uh it's going to be quite a ride. I think that's an understatement. Um, I think that there, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if, if Google delays uh, the change to the Chrome by a couple months and, and may give the industry some much needed time, but no one knows, I guess, I guess unless, except for someone somewhere we are deep within Chrome. So I think we all have to operate in a way that change needs to happen, change needs to happen quickly. And it's going to cover across all facets of the industry, all facets of, you know, from advertising to marketing. So just uh, be prepared. Okay. Zhao? Yeah, along those same lines, be prepared. Nobody knows what's going to happen in the future. Uh, you know, we're all dancing in this together. Uh, I think um, for us, it's um, planning and preparing and also uh, building on what we've already been working on. Um, so omni-channel, AI, um, creative. Um, and I think uh, clients will uh, lean more into those uh, different channels. Awesome. So we take us home, last word. Uh, I think we're in the throwing spaghetti against the wall stage, right? So this is a time of discovery of, of leaning in, trying everything out, learning um, and iterating as fast as we possibly can. So. Awesome. And I love the cat in the background over your shoulder. I can't stop staring at your wonderful cat. Selma, thanks for coming on Zhao. Chris, thanks Thank for coming you. on this awesome panel. Uh, industry breakdown of the cookie conundrum, the recipe for success, data, AI, open. Uh, the future's here, it's coming, it's coming fast. I'm John Furrier with theCUBE. Thanks for watching.